Uh, okay, uh, so first, uh, on behalf of the, um, the, uh, the organizers of this SMCB seminar series, let me uh, first uh, say a few words. Uh, so this SMCB, which means essentially statistical mechanics in chemistry and biology, and we started this uh, seminar series uh, under the mentorship of uh, Professor Bakchi. And we, we started it uh, in March uh, 2021. Uh, that, that was the first lecture given by Professor Amarindu Chandra. And then we have had a series of uh, very nice uh, lectures. We had so far total 15 talks uh, that included both uh, talks from faculty members as well as uh, senior postdoctoral researchers and so on. And uh, always our motivation had been to introduce the students and young researchers to the, uh, the frontiers of uh, this research area at how we apply concepts of uh, statistical mechanics, both equilibrium and non-equilibrium to solve problems at the interface of chemistry and biology. So that has been our uh, motivation throughout to have a platform for having discussion, uh, exchange of ideas, collaboration and so on. And this has been going on very nicely. And now uh, uh, today, uh, to, uh, so that is, that is uh, the uh, introduction from, uh, from the organizer side. So now to carry out the further proceedings of uh, specifically today's event, I request uh, Professor Ranjit Bishash uh, from SN Bose uh, Center to uh, kindly take over and um, uh, conduct the further proceedings. Ranjit, thank you. Thank you, Shimon. Thank you. Uh, I'm audible, right? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. Very good afternoon and welcome again to the SMCV online platform. Uh, <clears throat> As uh, Shimon has uh, said, that this is the second lecture of the series on non-equilibrium uh, equilibrium, non -equilibrium statistical mechanics. The recording of the first lecture is available, and this one is also going to get recorded and will be uh, able to listen to it many times if we want. And this lecture uh, would be largely based on a time-dependent statistical mechanics book that is now Professor Bhakti is writing. And you would see in his lecture, many of the references time to time will be cited. Another particular book, Equilibrium Statistical Mechanics, which has already been published and written by Professor Bhakshi. With this, I uh, invite Professor Bhakshi to uh, start the lecture. Thank you. Bhakshi. Thank you, Ranjit. And thank you, Sumon. Uh, really much of the credit goes to this uh, three, uh, Sumon, uh, Ranjit, and Rajiv. You know, they have really carrying it on very well. Now, this is something, a platform, which was much needed. Many, many students told me that, and postdocs told me that this is something they really, really enjoy. Because we didn't have before that a dedicated platform. And though many people, uh, when we joined, there were only 20 theoreticians, you know, <laughs> faculty, and only even few students, not many students, because most of us are one or two students. From there now, it is <laughs> 1,000 or more than that. And StatMac also has grown. And so uh, as you grow, you need to be specialized, you know, and it's a huge subject. Okay. So with that introduction, we'll start now. Uh, so I briefly, very briefly review what we did last time. <coughs> so, uh, so we did some goal and preliminaries and uh, uh, how it started. And uh, so... We'll do a little bit of that again. So this this all I have done. I'm not going to do that. And these are the two books that uh, Runji talked about. Uh, left one is available. You can steal it very easily now in uh, internet, uh, quote unquote. Um, the other one is still not available, but should be available because it's the. But this has also become a very long book, and this is something I talked about, and this is available. On the, on the recording, uh, the scope of time dependent stat mac. I have a similar thing in equilibrium stat mac book for the equilibrium, you know, which is to a great extent phase transition and similar things. Uh, now, uh, and this is what we'll do, hopefully, somewhat, that we'll do. Uh, so the stat mac course has been divided into following uh, thing that we have something a, a part which you call preliminaries. Uh, preliminaries involve probability theory, uh, relation between theory and experiment, and uh, then uh, the uh, the force and flux relationship, 
and then hydrodynamics and kinetic theory of gases. Chapter six is kinetic theory of gases. Then starts Lyovel equation, uh, time correlation function for holism. Then I go to projection operator technique, and which is a method to calculate the ideally means the blackboard here, but uh, is a method to calculate the time position functions. That's what purpose of position of a technique and memory function formalism. We also have, uh, so other, another way of doing those things is, is the cumulant expansion. Uh, this is the part two, part three is phenology, where you do for Kaplan equations, Markovsky equation, Brownian motion, Leibniz equation, random walk, and like that. <clears throat> that is phenology. Then come uh, certain applications where we, we do, I think, Ising model and <coughs> this, uh, transition kinetics, rate theory, uh, spectroscopy. Uh, and we have a few, two, three chapters on quantum dynamics also because they come very well together and some advanced topics. So that is essentially done here. So time dependent statistical mechanics was born out of two things, which is kind of theory of gases and hydrodynamics. Unfortunately, in physical chemistry and chemistry disciplines, even in uh, to some extent in physics, hydrodynamics is not taught well, and kinetic theory of gases is also not taught well. At least kinetic theory of gases is taught, but hydrodynamics is just a scary bunch of equations. And I'll tell you basically how to think about them because those two are essential and they are combined to what we call the modern time dependent step back. Hydrodynamics and kinetic theory is combined. I'm repeating it. And so, so I find the students have really difficulty understanding time dependent step back. And one of the reasons is that some basic essential things are not taught to students. If you don't have your basics right, no way you can do that. <clears throat> okay, so we have already done the points to spectroscopy. We have done all the different experimental techniques and relationship between theory and experiment, and uh, then fluctuations. And some explain some examples of relationship we have done. I will see it again today. This is my favorite and one of the most most uh, valuable and illustrative example of the hydrodynamics, time correlation, function formulation, and this is the launching pad of. Uh, uh, so one more relationship of the infrared spectroscopy, and then isotopic Raman. Thing. These are all experiments, you know, these are bread and butter. Uh, but even the guys who are doing the experiment many times don't know. And uh, in one of the first thing when I came back here, I saw people are using them as diagnostic tool. And I, I told them, what do you do with the wheat? Because wheat is so important. Nobody was caring about the wheat, but wheat have the dynamics. Now in solid state, of course, wheat is very low. But even then probably you can get something, but probably much higher level of experimentalization, which was available, made available later. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, I um, uh, uh, convert microscopic information to macroscopic observables. We did that last time. And these are the <clears throat> fathers who treated time dependent stat, stat Mac. Willard gives more with equilibrium stat Mac, but uh, Maxwell and Boltzmann are more credited with the uh, non equilibrium stat Mac. You know. Now, <coughs> we talk of uh, two, two kinds of averages, because in experiment, we get the averages, and two kinds of averages are the time averages and ensemble averages. And it was uh, Boltzmann did the time average, uh, Gibbs introduced ensemble average, and then the uh, postulates of StatMac defines them and says they are the uh, same. And uh, time average will equal from average. And then there is one equal prior probability. But then when, once you make them same, you need ergodic hypothesis. I discussed that last time. And some fluctuations, Einstein introduced fluctuations. And, uh, and showed this relation delta x square cv. And uh, it's a beautiful derivation. You can get it like down if it's uh, uh, for, um, a second edition. I, 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 first edition, I have not seen too much, but I bought the second edition. And then there are more, they split it into and made two books and that I think was a martyr. One of the things you never do is a very popular and uh, you, never, you never make too many editions of that and don't split it. Okay. <clears throat> so now, these are the, the things. Then what I did, uh, the mapping from, what I mean by mapping, mapping from microscopic understanding, microscopic interactions to uh, observed variables. That, that is that's the code. Uh, starting from intermolecular potential, how do we get viscosity, how we get diffusion, how we describe a phenomena. Okay, that I have some things. 
And I, I discussed last session, I discussed a little bit more of that today, that this <coughs> last session of the diffusion equation. And there's one more example of that. And then I went to probability theory and uh, I told the, my favorite is this, the, uh, these three books, Feller, Kaila Chung, we just call it KLC and Hakim Synergetics. Introduction to Synergetics of Hakim is the beauty. That's probably if you tell me to, uh, for students, then uh, Synergetics and Introduction is the best book. Mm -hmm. These are uh, one of the purpose by giving the course is that, that one or two students, you know, will be interested. These one or two students, uh, uh, I hope they are listening and somebody, you have to mute somebody, Sumon. Now, uh, so then we describe with the probability sample space and we divide probability thing. And uh, so the diffusion equation and some basics of probability theory we did, these are available in the A. Then one important thing we did center limit theorem, which is very important. Students don't know that this is why you much of your distribution in energy or volume fluctuation in entity simulation is Gaussian, and you can get compressibility or specificity from that. Is because and this works beautifully, just just amazing. Uh, the uh, works, you know, uh, many 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 books written on that. The why it works so well, but those are from mathematics point of view. From physics point of view, probably we need a little bit more understanding of central limit theorem. The, at least I would like to have the for quite the universal uh, applicability. And then we uh, do theorem, which is a just second most important theorem probably for us in most beautiful theorem, which says if a process is a Markovian, and if this value of the x is a Gaussian, then this time collision function is exponential. It is just amazingly beauty. If you have uh, Nobel Prize, then Oh, a Gauss problem, but uh, this itself also deserves that kind of thing or more. Okay, then random walk. I said a little bit of the random walk and uh, this line of equation and the underlying things. Uh, it's just beautiful and very useful. So second lecture is not going to be on stat map. And as uh, I said, why I how find such extensive use? Why? And I wanted to do something last class. I couldn't get. I, I think uh, time ran out or some things happened. Uh, I got tired for me. Uh, so I'll have a little bit of take an example from our just two minutes to go through some things and give you. All of you should actually know that the what are the kind of things one is doing, uh, whether you are doing um, uh, spectroscopy or uh, infrared spectroscopy or 2D IR. You are doing Allostatic regulation, you are doing solvation dynamics or anything, then you you need a some form, not a good be stat map that you will use. Even when you are doing the time correlation function, that itself a concept that comes from dynamics. You know, it is not a concept inherent in equilibrium stat map. Okay, like in my equilibrium stat map book, I don't have a chapter on time correlation function, but in this case, I have three chapters on time correlation function. Okay. <clears throat> So there are a little bit going to do now, very little. Uh, some of the things that you have uh, done and I not to sell my work at all because these are already published long time, but these are easiest for me to pick up from my slides and to be here. So one is how do ions move in water? There's something Rujit worked a lot and, and uh, it is something, much of it is still unsolved, which is very interesting uh, that uh, entire area of electrochemistry, including your batteries, you really need uh, non equilibrium statistical mechanics or time dependent statistical mechanics because to, to understand the results. If you don't care about understanding or you want understanding at a certain amount of phenological level, then probably you don't need. You can draw correlations and you can get away, but it's good to understand because uh, then, uh, uh, so basically, you know, there are ions, and, but the, a lot of work has been done on ions, but they're not much on uh, uh, beginning to be done. Uh, like uh, nitrate ions, like sulfate ions, the phosphate ions, huge number of fields there who study simulation has been done, but almost almost zero theoretical work has been done, and that's waiting really for uh, since I am now basically on my way out. I think I want to draw these attentions to students that they are beautiful problems, but they are hard problems. As you can see, they are uh, hundred years old problems, many of them. Okay, 
then this is a polarization profile water and this is now being a lot of in, in, uh, in the, uh, attention done on this more recently because experiments are found by very very many very complicated experiments done by one person is okay i think somewhere in switzerland or just published a science incidents this is wonderful experimentalist she found that their ions are correlated even uh, under action i don't know whether i believe that but that is the kind of lens scale where do they come from so that is so i'm just showing how the two ions can interact not just coulombs or screening uh, that we uh, cool, the ordinary coulombs but look at the water molecules which are orient so much um, and they interact with each other the water molecules so effective interaction between plus and minus ions go through so okay uh, and of course one of the reason of our doing these things was marcus theory this is famous inverse parabola of marcus theory you know is single Nobel prize but which also is more than that uh, it, it, it is a language now yeah, theory of electron transfer reaction how how does it happen because what beauty of uh, marcus theory was the introduction of the reaction coordinate and the reaction coordinate is the collective coordinate which is solvation energy you know never before never before in chemical dynamics we introduced a concept which is collective coordinate we usually are no bond breaking or rotation right uh, but it is nothing like that the reaction is driven by the solvation energy which is is charge and polarization and uh, some of all these things so this is the famous Nobel prize winning eh? then we uh, protein folding and protein folding is a huge thing that went on almost everybody worked on it and became heroes and uh, very famous, I was looking into Ken Deal's uh, Google Scholar, and I think he found many, many papers which are cited five, six thousand times. You know, it's amazing, essentially talking very simple things of uh, pathways and establishing something by simple simulation. Okay, these are some things we read, you know, there and it's a with, with Shakespeare, Hamlet, and it means, but, but that's not my goal at all. My goal is that the breadth of statistical mechanics the breadth of statistical mechanics, how many, many things come together and it's a quite a beautiful thing. Okay. Uh, then there is this uh, protein hydration layer. I found one thing, we introduced the term biological water whimsically with Nilashish Nondi. But then I am writing a paper now on current opinion in structural biology. They invite you to write these articles. And I went through a biological literature, and I was surprised so many of them referred to the term biological water, which we introduced. They don't cite us. Then I would have got those those 10,000 citations, but they're all using the term biological water. It's very interesting. So we introduced this concept. Um, so I'm just telling the students that how even 97, 98, so late, one could introduce the concept and these are the dialectic constant and showing how near the protein derived constant is 40, but outside it's 68. Experimentalists also find something like that by using one of their uh, spectroscopic technique, which allows them to measure the polarity. Okay. Now, different uh, in solvation dynamics, cyber, there are completely huge amount of controversy because all different experiments give different results. Plus, there is this huge uh, objection to calling it biological water, which seems to be settled now. and. Uh, then, uh, so it was that, why this is so different? And this is where the, all the results are different. And that is where statistical mechanics proved its worth, a time dependent step back, that we could show. <coughs> the reason is that um, different experiments were measuring different things. Uh, so you have to go and see what experiment, uh, what is the quantity of experiment measuring? As I already told you, the um, uh, infrared spectroscopy is mu q. Uh, then uh, a, a Raman scattering Q, Q is the uh, normal coordinate, this distance, bond distance. Uh, so, and uh, dialectic glassation, total moment, moment polarization. So it is important that what you measure. And so different experiments are measuring, getting a time scale and they are saying they are different. Okay. Because really, really, that also, I want to keep it a poetry all the time. It, I, I think you guys have seen it. It's a very nice poetry, but still read me. I don't have many other poetry that didn't get time to put in. That it was the six men of Hindustan. It was uh, Sykes, uh, John or George Sykes, I forgot. It was the six men of Hindustan to learning much inclined. 
who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. So one guy say it is like a rope, an elephant is a rope. Another guy says it's a wall. Another said it is like a spear. And so everywhere then they started fighting. So these men of Hindustan disputed loud and long, each in all were in the wrong. Uh, it, it, so it is very important to know, to do theory, to understand these experiments. If you don't do theory, then many times you can come up, come out and come back with a uh, partial view. And then more recently, that is a lot of work going on on protein association. So then question is that we have not been able to solve the problem. We are still working on it, but far from anywhere. That the, what the role water is playing. <laughs> the water in between is different from water in the path. And that is a very important note. One major problem that one wants to know who is driving who. If there's a large scale fluctuation in water density and water orientation takes place, that an activated process. Is that the one driving? Or it is the protein which is driving. All the uh, focus is on protein. But uh, both are area, and you need a model where they are coupled. In a heuristic model, I proposed is that you um, both consider spring and they are coupled spring. And so it is not who is living whom. Uh, I think both are involved. And it's a very, very interesting problem. Very, very lot of development can be done and not been done. Okay. The other thing in nano, one point butter people doing that if I have two hydrophobic surfaces, how far they are from each other and how far they know each other. And that seems like a different estimates. Again, there are some say 100 Armstrong, some say 5 Armstrong. Uh, and it's another very interesting problem. So StatMac is required in many, many areas. This is, I took probably three minutes. I should have taken less probably. is required in many areas, especially the concepts, because they allow you to think and make progress. Particularly so in solution phase chemistry and in biology, where uh, the lot of averaging is involved, uh, many different time scales. So depending on your, your ex resolution of your experiment, resolution of your microscope, you are coming up with the different conclusion. It's very, very important that the point I'm making here. Okay, so we go back to a little bit more. <coughs> we consider this very important beginning of linear response theory. This is the beginning of statistical mechanics by Onsager, time dependent set back, that if I put a force, then I get a flux. That's a very trivial thing. All of you know in undergraduate fixed law and Fourier law. And this L is a linear response. But what Onsager could say that, look, if I have two things together, then uh, if I put force in one, then I find that I am getting response of flux in the other one. This is called the cross correlation or reciprocal relation. So, so two perturbations of the system, they can uh, temperature gradient and electric field. And found if I put an electric field, there's a temperature gradient set. If I put an electric field, a temperature, uh, you know, you can go to a museum and it's always there for you to uh, experiment it. And, uh, and he proved that LIG equal to LGI. I'm not going to do the proof here. I thought I'll do because I can do it later uh, with, the, with the much easier, from the point of view of time correlation function formation. Uh, uh, it's very interesting for me because uh, I, Onsager's Dibayugel Onsager, we could derive with uh, Ranjit and Amolendu in few pages, two pages, I guess, or one page, I don't remember. So, uh, they took some 15 pages. Uh, Onsager was, I remember 17 pages, very difficult. And we did that in one page. So many interesting things actually when you go through time correlation function. Onsager was an unmatched genius. Uh, and he could do that, those are kind of difficult things. But now with the modern time correlation function formulation, things can be much, much simpler. It's something, a huge education in, for you in that, for all these students. So uh, as I said already, that there are uh, these approaches, hydrodynamic kinetic theory gases, they combine together to give modern statistical mechanics. Uh, and then side by side, phenology was being developed because see, the modern stat pack was not there when uh, Einstein, Langen, uh, Smolkowski did these things. Okay. And now, of course, computer has come. And so people think they don't need to, first three columns don't need to be learned. Uh, uh, that's where I beg to differ that you do need some parts of the first three columns. Otherwise, you won't be able to think, you know. Uh, like, for example, people doing all the machine learning and everything. And then, one major question is that how much data set you need to get it 
thing. The empirical things has been done, but there are probably something like central equilibrium, some kind of formulation which allows us to think a little better. Okay. So now I start hydrodynamics. Uh, so <coughs> hydrodynamics is the uh, uh, combination of conserv conservation laws and constitutive equations. There are a lot of equations there. I'll, yeah, I'll not go through details of them. Uh, I can send the books. Uh, which are okay with a few, few typos and <laughs> equations that can be corrected, otherwise they're okay. And the hydrodynamics deep as a reliable spectrum, it is to Stokes relation between friction and viscosity and many, many other generalized hydrodynamics. And then of course, kinetic theory of gases. Kinetic theory of gases is, so this gives us time condition function. It's very interesting. Hydrodynamics is to time condition function and a bunch of relations, but does not give you viscosity, does not give you diffusion, does not give you thermal diffusivity. Mm. They are given by kinetic theory of gases. That's what I say. They, 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 they the major thing of time given is step back one have to realize. Student must realize that those two are combined. Okay. So kinetic theory of gas give expression, more particular expression for transport properties, which are valid in ideal gas, low, low density. Uh, but then they have all been uh, generalized now. Central to kinetic theory of gas, which is not taught to you in undergraduate, but should at least be mentioned, not even mentioned, it's crime, is a Boltzmann kinetic equation and Boltzmann H theorem. So I'll do that because that's a lacuna, that's a deficiency you guys grew up with, and I think that should be removed. Okay, so now before I go, there's a uh, derivation mm -hmm. where I find quite neat, which is uh, done with uh, Shongita, uh, you know, recently. We have gone mad and we are uh, trying to uh, publish it, you know. Uh, uh, they told us to, we send a journal of eight years early. Uh, so, <laughs> No, it will be published in some kind of journal. Okay, so uh, we want to do uh, the velocity velocity correlation function, and that is um, in in this case, please take v as a vector as the velocity. Uh, so v square term should come here. Okay, now uh, that means I want the velocity distribution as a v as a vector. Now, how do I, uh, there are many derivations. Some derivations are again pretty long. Now, I give you a very one-line derivation and I love this derivation. I say, okay, since it's a vector, each component Vx, Vy, Vz is involving separately. They are coupled. Don't forget that, coupled through conservation. There's another very interesting thing, but they are undergoing collisions. So at any given time, I can write the velocity as a sum of the random numbers, which is change, random changes, delta V1, delta V2, delta Vn. Now, delta V on delta V, delta Vn are weakly correlated with each other. Then what does central limit, theory, central limit theorem tells me? It tells me it's a Gaussian. So that's why Maxwell distribution is so universal. I, when I, I did that, I sent it to Diggs there. I uh, may it. I interrupt you here? Srabun is speaking. Uh, can you do it later? Uh, no, I just wanted to know why you have capital N uh, random numbers here. Capital N random number? What is capital N? Here, uh, your VXT is that equal so, to yeah, zero yeah, value. Okay, you can make it something else. Uh, I don't care. Now, now uh, it is it is nothing to do with total number of particles. If you that's what is confusing. No, it is not the total number of particles. It is just n number of positions. Mm. But thank you for pointing out. You should have read my, my, read my uh, group read my books. Uh, I told you again and again, but you don't have time. Okay. So now, so n is just number of positions. Okay, that capital. N. Is that correct? Is that is that does clarify you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Now that n below in entropy and Boltzmann formula, n is the total number of particles in microcanonical ensemble. Now, when I first okay, so I can derive from central limit theorem that why it is e to the power of m v square, but or v square, but v square divided by v square average, the standard deviation. How do I get V square average? I don't want to do uh, uh, any kind of things that people do in ideal gas law. I said, okay, it has a KBT. So if there's a Boltzmann constant is there, I, where does it first come? It comes in Boltzmann formula. That's where KB first one of the most important constant of the universe. That's where KB comes. So then I must start from there. Then I do this microcanonical thing and I know the entropy of a microcanonical uh, gas and I exactly get the, I go through 
find the density of states, I get the omega, I get the entropy, and I get exactly that. Then I we did it for a bunch of harmonic oscillators. And that also exactly works out, but in a very different proof. So it is something which is that if you want to tell students why Maxwell distribution is Gaussian, why it is so universally valid. My book, always problem is that it is valid in liquid, gas, solid, everywhere. What the, you know, why it is valid? So I can say always because half mb square, you have cavity. Uh, but that was not really satisfactory the physical reason, right? So, uh, so that doesn't give you the Gaussian, but in central limit, so I think this is really probably the most fundamental derivation of Maxwell distribution. I know at least I have the point of view. Okay, so I don't want to do anything more than that. I go to both my H theory and H function. As I said, this is something which is not taught and should be taught. Now, what happened, Bojman was uh, trying to derive. He was very much, as I probably mentioned in the last lecture, uh, Bojman was hugely influenced by uh, the Maxwell's paper. I think 1857 or 1860, around that time. And uh, by the way, now is 1872. This year is 150 years of Boltzmann's famous paper, the H function H theorem paper. So we are celebrating 150 years. So I'm very pleased that I've been able to do something in, his, in that 150 years. Now, Boltzmann H function H theorem came how? I'm going to tell you that. But before that, let me define the H function. This is defined by A minus sign is put in, uh, you can take it out. If you take it out, then this next equation becomes the reverse. Important thing is the following, that Boltzmann started doing, he wanted to extend Maxwell's kinetic theory of gases. See, Maxwell in the book of kinetic theory of gases, you don't see any names on the uh, viscosity or the diffusion or mean free path uh, conductivity. Much of that were, much of that were done by, uh, by Maxwell. So Boltzmann wanted to extend it to take interactions in that out, the two molecules interact. And so that was his goal. So he wrote the last equation of that slide, this, this uh, projected slide, that so in the left-hand side, I have, F is the force term, P is the momentum. So I have a gradient of the distribution, singlet distribution. Boltzmann started as a good old man as a singlet distribution because much of uh, Maxwell was singlet distribution. So he now write it that first term is the, the second term is the interaction term, third term is the external force term. <coughs> so I can write that the, the streaming term and all this other than that, the change is due to collision. So that is the right term. Okay. Now this is a uh, starting point. This is not Boltzmann kinetic equation, but this is uh, starting point. So coming back to H function, FPT, ln FPT, that reminds you something. Uh, Im immediately a student of StatMac, it is the orthodynamics is the entropy of mixing. So entropy of mixing, but in the phase space in the velocity space. Note that there is opposition there. And uh, we have a similar thing in density. Uh, I might have one slide on that, which is uh, introduced by Kubo. Now, this H function follows that equation. <coughs> and this DH, which we come back to. <coughs> now, this is now the Boltzmann kinetic equation in full glory. Uh, I, I resent uh, not being taught in undergraduate you don't have to do anything, but you, a professor or teacher should explain. So what is happening? Uh, there's a collision. Uh, one and two are colliding and departing with the momentum one prime, two prime. Momentum is conserved, energy is conserved. And TIJ is essentially like Fermi golden rule, transition property. It's very easy to explain. So this is one D4 and D2 by collision. But what do you see? On Sagar master been <coughs> Must not have, not have been terribly happy that he started the singlet distribution, but he landed with two particle distribution. This is first example of very famous thing in statistical mechanics called hierarchy. That means if I want to describe one particle, I need to consider two particle distribution. If I want to consider two particle distribution, I need to consider three particle distribution. And that is the hierarchy that we face that makes our life difficult. 
uh, in simulation, of course, you have average over, uh, but many, many times, when you have average over, you cannot explain things. Uh, uh, you do need the theoretical distribution functions. Okay. What <clears throat> now comes a uh, very Shumon, Professor Balki is frozen now. Why is he frozen? Yeah, I think he has some network issue probably. Uh, maybe can you call him and uh, inform him? He has to change his network probably. Are you calling him? That molecular chaos. The, that means you now uh, uh, decompose the two-particle distribution the product of one-particle distribution. We, without doing that, you cannot do anything. If you try to do for two-particle distribution, it will three-particle distribution. So that was Boltzmann's famous molecular chaos, principle of molecular stochal uncertainty. He was heavily criticized for that. Okay. Once he does that, he, he, you know, this introduced the molecular chaos, which is the hundreds of years. I, a, 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 a hundred years after that, even people were doing that. Now, then I write the equation now, DFDT, in a much simpler form. Now I go back and I want this uh, Boltzmann, uh, uh, Boltzmann H equation, and then I derive an equation for Boltzmann uh, H function, which is this thing. Now, <clears throat> just be, I put it DFDT, and DFDT is. Uh, uh, Given in, uh, uh, yeah, this equation already is uh, first equation is the uh, Boltzmann's uh, kinetic equation, and then molecular chaos. Then I can write you know, one more equation saying that, but I have uh, skipped that thing. I directly go to time derivative of h function, and then that h function get the following form. That it, as you can see here, f ln f, this form comes in. So now, what did Boltzmann has to show under all, you know, he was heavily criticized, but he was already very, very smart person. He said, okay, one thing I must show that after making, and very, listen very carefully, after making the molecular chaos assumption, I have to show my distribution goes to Maxwell distribution, velocity distribution. That means in long time at equilibrium, my distribution, whatever non-equilibrium may have, must go to Maxwell distribution. He must show that. In order to show that, he introduced the H function. And he showed if the H function follows that relation that I showed, then he could show in a two the force that Maxwell distribution, my his um, uh, kinetic equation now, he, 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 which is uh, somewhat reduced of the top equation goes to Maxwell distribution. So uh, this is very, very interesting, but a 
Okay. So recently we have, so I, when I was writing the book, I looked into many places. I could not get a single good uh, graph of the both one H function. <coughs> so Shubham and Subhajit were doing that. And so this beautiful, we, uh, they considered many uh, uh, systems, 1D, 2D, 3D, and uh, many cases everywhere, the beautiful. Uh, the top one is the uh, Maxwell velocity distribution. And then you normalize, you find the almost exponential thing. So uh, now I want to uh, spend more time on the, this slide. Now I have, for the first time in my life, a function, a, a phase space distribution function. Now, if I have a phase space distribution function, my first thing, my impulse would be to see, is the linear response valid? How do I do linear responses valid? That's what he told us. Kubo uh, taught us that it would not depend. That's what also there's regression hypothesis. It does not depend on my extent of perturbation. So here we have taken two cases with a different uh, initial distribution, completely non-equilibrium. In one case, just just two delta function, and in one case, there's a uh, uniform square wave distribution, and then. One evolves in simulation. We uh, 1D, 2D, 3D, and you find it goes through very different initial state distributions, and they give the H function, which are very different when you plot it. But when you normalize them, I didn't expect it that it is completely. So this is why I'm showing that that this is what linear response theory is. That these are one of the best illustrations of linear response theory that I know. And these are the things I showed past day. Remember, I showed, okay, I have one distribution is equilibrium, another I part of non-equilibrium. Then I show the non-equilibrium one is going to equilibrium. Correct? And so, uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, am I visible? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. yes fully. Okay, all right. So, so here you have, this is something you can teach in the class in almost that how uh, the linear response is, is, is working out with a completely phase space distribution part, uh, function, single particle phase space distribution. I want to do more now on F2 and all these things that has not been done, but it's a textbook kind of work. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I include, but particularly this one that uh, I have a distribution function. I have a function F log F, which is a beautiful function, uh, and that is. Now, um, that uh, gave me something very interesting thing to do, statistical mechanics. Now, I said that phenology is the focal blank equation, small course equation that we'll do, but I can just tell you one little thing, how powerful these things are. So I can write down velocity space focal blank equation, which is this thing that is on first board. This, if you take dfdt equal to zero, then you, it goes over, to a, uh, the, it is written as a, a, um, a uh, this is written as a uh, moralist microcanonical ensemble. That's why we have average energy is rewritten. It should be canonical, it will be temperature there. Okay, now, so equilibrium distribution is a Maxwell distribution. The important thing is that this solution can be solved. Given in Chandrasekhar's famous 1941, everybody should read that Chandrasekhar's review article, um, volume 15, page 1, 1941. Okay, so that uh, analytical solution is known. Then one can go back and do the integration, and one can get a H function, analytical form of this Boltzmann H function. Why I'm spending so much time? Because Boltzmann himself said this is the entropy, and I'll come to that. Okay. And then we did that, and in three dimension, uh, the uh, focal blank equation works out beautifully. It doesn't work in 1D. For reasons, we'll have to, that has to wait. But we can see the form, we can get the. Now, very, very important. This, uh, uh, so, from focal blank equation, please note the focal blank equation. This is one of the most important equations of statistical mechanics, whose solution is known. It is also known in, a, in, in its position space in the harmonic oscillator. In the absence of any force, the diffusion equation solution. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now one has. Uh, okay. So uh, that uh, I don't have seem like that uh, the one slide somewhere missing it to come somewhere. Probably deleted it. Uh, that one can show. 
that uh, at equilibrium, the Boltzmann H function is same as entropy, uh, which is supported to diffusion. And that is very trivial uh, to do. Uh, do the H function by integration, your F log F, F to put the Maxwell distribution, do the integration. That is the same as the Sarkovtector equation, where they differ by KB. Uh, that is entropy is there. That's what led Boltzmann and, uh, to say that this is the same as the cross. And he said, okay, H function, uh, so as the point always increases, or as we show, it's always increasing, evolving to equilibrium. So is process definition of entropy. <coughs> so, so we do have uh, an arrow of time thing. Uh, now, you don't really have too much time. Let me go through. Now, uh, this is the uh, thing. Now, with the Boltzmann kinetic equation, now finally we can talk of uh, we can talk of uh, uh, interaction between particles. Now, how do interaction between particles in a kind of average way enter? See, you are a particle and you are going to undergo collisions. You want to go beyond binary collision. So you see the probability of binary collision and that is nothing but the radial distribution function. So Maxwell <coughs> friction is given by the first equation. Once Scott, in Scott and his chap, in Scott Chapman derived the second one, which is actually is right now wrong by M because it should be just Z sigma. So, uh, friction epsilon, the heart sphere will be just uh, zeta m g sigma. Okay, so uh, uh, but you get the you get the picture, right? That it, it is just the probability of collision that, you get. and that already does wonderful job. If you take heart sphere fairly high density, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, you will find before the uh, dense relaxation becomes important, you find that Enskog approximation of friction does a very good job. And this what goes over into the eventual development of theories like mode coupling theory as the binary friction. So Enskog we always use as the binary friction, and that Enskog approximation came from uh, solution of uh, Boltzmann kinetic equation. Mm. It's very very interesting and very important. But you will get these slides. Uh, okay. So now, as I was saying, <coughs> this. Enskog at the level, he had to sum over everything and he just had a kind of technology. Uh, but he tried to solve those equations that I have a little bit uh, of it on. So beyond the binary conditions, that was actually kinetic theory of gases in around 1970, 72. And so it's an old field. But there you see two particles, one and two, they are colliding. Then two goes and collide another particle. And then again, recondition. This is called ring condition. That means I can now sum over the probability of the intermediate particles. That's why ring collisions are so important. Here, another right, another ring collision. So ring collisions can be summed up because you can see the probability of another collision. I can uh, talk of that. And this is did a wonderful job when these ring collisions were taken into account. One could des describe very important uh, by Barney Alder and Oppenreich. Uh, and and and, and uh, Anisul Homan, the long time tail in velocity time collision function. That is so. These are very pioneering one. I always thought that these guys deserve more uh, credit than they got. They are very famous, of course, and like So, so this is where one we developed kind of new uh, collisions, and that ultimately took to the mode coupling theory, but, but you have to wait for that. Something very interesting happened in between. Okay, so let's go back again to 1920, 1930. Then a little before that, 1920 is okay. You know, David Hilbert, David Hilbert who is the Hilbert space. He's the one who taught uh, uh, tensor and all these things, dyadics, Einstein. Hmm? Uh, when Einstein was doing the theory of relativity, uh, he was in Göttingen, Hilbert was in Göttingen, and Einstein used to come and uh, learn from Hilbert. Now, Hilbert started this. Hilbert said, okay, how can I have a solution of Boltzmann guy uh, phase case density? And then he said, okay, the one solution I know is like perturbation theory. I know the equilibrium solution. So let me create a perturbation around the local equilibrium. I'll talk a little bit more of that on local equilibrium. 
Local equilibrium is a local temperature and maximum distribution. Then I need some conservation laws. Those conservation are the those which call, uh, are conserved in collisions. They are density, momentum, and energy. We have been talking this for some time now. So Chapman, uh, Hilbert Chapman crowding procedure is a wonderful procedure. I don't have too much of that, but uh, uh, I have a local uh, equilibrium distribution. Yeah. So this is the thing that one starts. If not, the local equilibrium assumption that it is same as uh, Maxwell distribution, but everything is local. And the local equilibrium assumption has some wonderful thing. It has limitations, but it has wonderful thing. I can use some connects. I'll come back to that. Okay. So, uh, so this with the local uh, approximation and this expansion of FRPT into F naught plus a term which is prefactored is a small epsilon we introduce, uh, which is, is which is is the uh, uh, in a large collision limit. We go over to uh, 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 Maxwell distribution. In a low collision limit, a non equilibrium, as we already saw in a one dimension, for example, it uh, takes a long time for equilibrium distribution to reach. And you can also see hard sphere and Denard Jones. Denard Jones decays faster, goes to equilibrium faster. Hard sphere slow because in Leonard Jones, it is interacting with a larger number of particles. Okay. So this we know now. But that time they didn't know, but so they did this local uh, equilibrium density and as an expansion procedure. And that has a far reaching consequences, I'll, I'll, I'll show. Okay, now before I go, now I'll go from, uh, from kinetic theory of gas to hydrodynamics. I want to introduce three time scales, very important. One is the density relaxation time scale, which is sigma is molecular diameter, ds is self diffusion coefficient. Tau g is the momentum relaxation. <laughs> use an effective mass and tau h tau h is just like tau rho, but this is for heat diffusion so thermal conductivity so these are the time scales we are faced with density time scale in liquid is look at the time scale 100 picosecond momentum relaxation is very fast that is 0 0.01 picosecond these are just order of magnitude i have a, i missed a there and it, this is 0.1 picosecond that's why many times we get away by doing smaller ghost equation, uh, we get away. Okay, now, uh, now I want to do a uh, bit more of Navier Stokes equation. Uh, I have described a little bit of how to go from Boltzmann kinetic equation uh, with starting FRPT and then expanding it in uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, I, yeah, okay. I, I am using my hand quite a bit, yeah? so uh, I I want okay. So uh, uh, so 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 what is kinetic theory of gases done? You know, kind of a modern kinetic theory of gases. What does it do? It talks of particles collisions. Boltzmann did binary collision. Then Dortmund, Cohen, Van Beeren, Arnst they introduced ring collisions. Then people have done a little bit more of that, but yeah, as soon as you go a little bit more into that, you have to bring the real distribution function and uh, those kind of uh, uh, spatial correlations. Enskop already kind of uh, inter introduced that in 1928. So we know that. Now, so Hilbert, Chapman, Cowling said, okay, if I have this FRPT, then I have a Boltzmann kinetic equation, a very powerful equation. Then I should be able to go into the Navier Stokes equation. And that is one of the really very important derivations one should do that how you go from, uh, I, I sorry, cannot do that because that itself will take two classes. So now, so I am now thinking of going from Boltzmann kinetic equation. I talk with uh, Hilbert and all the people told us that from a kinetic equation, you have to go to hydrodynamics and that has done. And that led to many other things, not the Navier Stokes equation. That was just the starting then Barnett equation, supercarnet in nonlinear equations, how hydrodynamics uh, came out essentially motivated by that. Now, so now I go back to hydrodynamics and hydrodynamics with you with, with these three time scales. Hydrodynamics is uh, the level we do, will do is the essential Navier Stokes equations. And Navier Stokes equations means combination of two things. One is the conservation law that uh, some things you cannot uh, uh, create or uh, destroy. And then in the process, you need fluxes. 
the same fluxes kind of fluxes once I got talked about, but those fluxes are now uh, are given by material properties. So whenever that kind of thing happens, when you introduce the material properties, these are called constitutive relations in science. Uh, so the constitutive relations are uh, the important thing, like uh, diffusion is a viscosity is a constitutive, uh, the diffusion uh, viscosity relation is a constitutive relation, that kind of relation. So the way it is done now that you uh, uh, just say conservation means there is no, so, uh, you know, source, no sink, something is flowing in, must go out. And uh, if some that pool does not come out, whatever stays inside will be change of density inside. Okay. So that is shown here. This is a show more do that right, you know, nice picture. So this is the equations that uh, we have three, three or uh, five conservation. If you have three momentum uh, components of momentum, then we have this, this conservation laws. Now conservation laws are now uh, written a little bit more poetically, you know, so delta dot G. Now I have put down G means density come velocity. And then uh, momentum means, you know, velocity, momentum and velocity, convection. So first, second term on this, the second equation on the right hand side is, um, is the convection. Uh, yeah. And then last term is the one that we, because of the forces that act on a volume element. Now, I just want to say one thing before I go to hydrodynamics. When I talk of these Navier-Stokes equations, please read landau lipschitz hydrodynamics fluid mechanics book. Fast few chapters, fast few pages. He described that when hydrodynamics is very important, when hydrodynamics is considered as a volume element. So what a point in hydrodynamics, actually a point which contains uh, hundreds of particles, if not thousands. So in hydrodynamics, landscape enters into its definition of the point. So hydrodynamic point is the point which has many particles. So that's why we can talk of thermodynamics. That's why we can talk of this kind of uh, coarse grain picture, you know. So it is really amazing that they were successful to an extent they were successful. Okay. So this is then the energy, same thing, flow and heat Q generated in the system and then the stress tensor. So stay, I will now tell you what is the stress tensor. <coughs> stress tensor is two terms. What is the pressure? So it's the volume element on which stress is acting. So this is the pressure. So P is the pressure. And then there is the off-diagonal terms. So of diagonal terms, actually, if I have volume element and then volume element here in my volume element, then if it's acting uh, some flag forces come and there is a gradient, this goes this way, this goes that way, then that creates uh, 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 not only force, uh, which will change the uh, a, a momentum, uh, it also causes dissipation. So then this is the, uh, the sigma prime is written as a symmetrized form. Uh, again, I, I tell you to read uh, 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 Landau-Lipschitz that why this equation is in this form. Uh, this, this is the major equation. Sometimes this equation itself is called the Navier-Stokes equation. So then what does, one does, you can see that already there are nonlinearity like uh, uh, That is, uh, uh, U is a flag, velocity is a fluctuation. So velocity fluctuation to be neglected. So this term goes out, you have just grad dot sigma. So if you neglect the uh, nonlinear terms, then you get a uh, linearized equation. You know, so fast is the, because you want, so rho has a fluctuation, rho naught plus delta rho. Since u one is a fluctuation because it's a velocity, we are talking equilibrium where average velocity is zero. So u one is a fluctuation. So rho, rho, delta rho, grad del dot u1 is neglected. Similarly, all this, after you do this kind of neglect, you get a linearized uh, Navier-Stokes equation. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that, uh, but these equations are not that difficult equations, really. If you look at them, they are fairly easy, like pressure, gradient of pressure is the force that we all write. Gradient of pressure, and that's the force. So we have a DGDT, DGDT is the rate of change of momentum. What is the rate of change of momentum? That is the force. What are the force coming from? One is gradient of pressure. One other thing, there are stress acting on that you have uh, elasticity theory that you have read in your class 11 and 12. So we just writing it and that brings in a dissipation. That's why viscosity comes in. If you think a little bit, you will be able to understand all of them. 
uh, or this navier stokes equation it is important that students should know these things and then energy if you do similar things energy will, you will come in uh, with uh, thermal conductivity and fluctuation in temperature so now as i said that this is the uh, uh, local equilibrium approximation what do we need the local equilibrium uh, uh, assumption because here in this case we have five equations but we have seven unknowns uh, <coughs> we have unknown temperature we have unknown u1 three u1 we have uh, uh, rho uh, and uh, 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 we need two more equations and uh, they are, if you assume local equilibrium, uh, local equilibrium, then you can use thermodynamics. And then thermodynamics is a uh, uh, standard uh, thermodynamic equation. This we use now to eliminate two variables. Uh, the, they, uh, el they eliminate the pressure, they eliminate, one eliminates the entropy and one eliminates pressure and replace them in terms of density and temperature fluctuations. So I have seven equations, entropy, pressure, uh, energy, three momentum and density. So seven, uh, I have five equations. So I need to then now by uh, this supplement these two equations. That's why I need the local equilibrium assumption. And local equilibrium assumption at the same time, I was telling you Chapman, Cowling, Hilbert did that. So they are parallel, they are doing these things. Okay, so this is again close up by using the thermodynamic relations. Okay, once we do that, we can go back and solve these equations. I have not written down those large, large equations here, but I can just say that you note one thing, as I said, that there are grad del delta. Uh, del delta, when you Fourier transform to Fourier uh, wave number space, it becomes KK, that's a dyadic a tensor which you can now decompose into longitudinal and transverse. When you do that longitude transverse, one doesn't complete anything. It just has a viscosity, but the longitudinal one uh, couples with density. So when you do that, uh, I just want you to listen to this thing. Last session in the quiz. Uh, that MRL book, which also available in the internet, you can get it and that all the equations. When you do that, I can now calculate density density fluctuation for relation function. This is the first example of the time condition function that we see. So that has a beautiful structure. Let me show the spectrum, then come back to this again. This is the relative linear spectrum, which plays such an important role in uh, time dependent statistical mechanics. And actually, it's amazing that people don't even hear of that uh, in physical chemistry or many places that not taught even they, there should be a small chapter on like scatter because that gives us so much of information the reason we know the values of thermal diffusivity much of the time or, or uh, bulk viscosity or thermal uh, um, the, the the bulk viscosity the velocity of sound all these things come out from relevant spectrum mm. and relevant spectrum is nothing but dynamic structure factor. And dynamic structure factor is nothing. We'll, we'll do it in more detail. Dynamic structure factor is nothing but density density correlation function. So density density correlation function in uh, wave number space uh, and uh, in in frequency space. Now I have one important issue here that I want to uh, <laughs> raise, which is the following. Uh, anybody can tell me why so many experiments were done before the modern laser and uh, uh, microscopy. All the experiments were done in wave number space and in uh, frequency plane. Can you please tell me why all the experiments like scattering, neutron scattering, infrared spectrum, Raman line width, everything were done, absorption spectrum, all were done in the K space, means wave number space and in the frequency space. It also give me a little time to, uh, I think I've talked almost 40, 50 minutes. Mm. Uh, uh, can you tell me? Anybody? 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. So why is this silent? Anybody? Please tell me. Did you wonder why all these experiments before lasers gave time domain and microscope gave uh, all, all the fancy electron microscopes gave you position space? What was the or why all the experiments were from early 20th century or even before that? Where are these? Even X ray, remember these word numbers. The logic that uh, X ray scattering uh, people use that inverse space is easy to formulate and understand the uh, diffraction pattern. Well, that is uh, about 40% of the answer. Anybody else? Okay, let Are me we supposed you. to answer? Yes, the of course, I'm asking should, no, you. No, no, the students should answer, right? I don't think this is too difficult for them. So it is for you. Right, right. We are also students. The master is at work. Yeah, so uh, the uh, if you are looking at the scattering, then you are uh, recording the scattering at different orientations, right? And the uh, scattering uh, wave vector is uh, directly related to the uh, incoming radiation through this uh, scattering angle theta. And that immediately gives you the information that you get uh, it's uh, directly, uh, directly in the... Not quite. Not quite. Okay. Uh, again, 30%. The reason is the following. The reason is that, see, in order to measure something, in order to know about a system, I have to perturb that system. I have to exchange energy and momentum, right? Okay. And if I do not exchange energy and momentum, I don't know about the system. I did not get any information, right? Yeah. And so, I do um, uh, absorption spectroscopy. I make that... In a system absorb energy. In momentum, I perturb it by exchanging momentum. So K space things are exchanging of momentum. Absorption, infrared, all the Raman are all exchanging of energy at a long way. So it is those you are perturbing the system. The system is made to absorb energy or made to deflect by exchange of momentum. That's why all the experiments of neutron scattering, you see a, a neutron coming and then scattered. And in the process, what do you measure? You measure the forward scattering, which gives the same momentum and the in a different angle, as you're saying, and that difference of that is the one point. Because that's that gives you the momentum exchange to the system. So <coughs> this is a very important concept that, uh, Earlier days, before laser and uh, microscope, uh, electronic microscope came, all our experiments, everyone, was uh, some uh, K-space or frequency space experiments. Here in Elevina spectra, it is a long wavelength. In the long wavelength, something like 5,000 angstrom, we are scattering, but we are exchanging here at that case, both momentum and energy, as that's what Navier Stokes equation tells you. So my the light goes in at the long wavelength light. And in my system, there are fluctuations, density fluctuation, momentum fluctuations. Because of density fluctuations, there is a dielectric constant varying in different locations. And so, and we know dielectric constant varying means they get the, there is a different refractions. So different regions are refract, refracting uh, light. And uh, in, in all of the zigzag going and they are made to absorb energy. And that is the spectrum that you see. That is why you get sound velocity. Mm. And that is the one you get thermal diffusivity, mm, which is called the heat mode. Think a little bit, think of relevant really spectrum. It really gives you tremendous dividend. Okay. Uh, now, however, as I said, the molecular view of hydrodynamics, I wanted to tell that these are long wavelength and long time. But in real world, in liquids or in solids, we are interested in a uh, faster time scale and much, much smaller length scale. Three orders of magnitude smaller length scale and probably five orders of magnitude uh, uh, smaller time scale. When you're doing that, what happens? This will do a little now that if I now want, say again, imagine a particle, a black particle among, white, uh, among other white neighbors. That black particle's dynamic C1. It is rattling around. 
it is rattling around with these uh, uh, molecules around. So it is not binary condition, just of Boltzmann. That's not valid. I'm not interested in hydrodynamics as, as such. I'm interested in molecular hydrodynamics. That's a term which was coined much later. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, so uh, too many fluctuations going on today because it's raining heavily here uh, in, 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 in Bangalore. Okay, so now uh, I want to uh, do that. Uh, so now, uh, um, so what happens then? This was something which came from neutron scattering from Van Blake, two big names were involved and Dijan. So Van Blake, when neutrons were available, Van Blake in, uh, he did, I think Grenoble did these experiments and found out, he tried, tried to find out the uh, neutron scattering at, at, at in, in which it comes from density fluctuations in liquid. And lo and behold, he expected hydrodynamics to work, but hydrodynamics completely breaks down. So the width, which is I plotted here at ZH, the o, o, y axis, you know, in the fast part that rising, the fast part that rising, it hydrodynamics says it rising like that. But here, when I have in the molecular lens, it's by molecular diameter. That's what neutron scattering measures. So neutron scattering measuring this part on the, the in deep <coughs> found that heat port there three orders of magnitude smaller than hydrodynamic prediction. So then he, they are very confused. And the person who explained this is Dijan. He has a beautiful language, he said. He said, at that length scales, neither energy conservation nor momentum conservation is important. It is only about number conservation and of course charge conservation. Number conservation remains. So if I talk only of number conservation I, and not of energy and momentum, I don't need navier stokes equation, but I need a new equation. What that equation would be? That equation in a little long, longer time scale will be a kind of a diffusion equation because I'm talking of change of number density uh, alone. And that's what Dijan's uh, beautiful thing, uh, yeah, uh, spending is more D, D, N, N, E, S, and G should be capital. Okay, small Gorsky philosophy equation, he wrote down. And so this is called uh, small Gorsky philosophy equation. You see, F is the force, but this force is coming from intermolecular correlation. So in the fourth, third equation, C is the direct correlation function. And when I do that, and again, I have to do the linearization again, then I get a beautiful, uh, FQT is uh, the intermediate scattering function whose Fourier transform in time gives the uh, dynamic structure. For now you see in the exponent, it is not dq squared by d, it is not thermal diffusivity, but it's a self diffusion by dynamic structure. Factor. I told you already, self diffusion, is two to three order magnitude smaller. That was the three time scales I showed in the beginning. Two or three order, uh, order magnitude smaller than thermal diffusion. Then it is divided by SQ near the peak of the structure factor that you are doing. SQ is about three. And then Q square part remains, but that comes, comes from conservation. So that is that explains why. And this is called Dijan narrowing. This is beautiful. And this Dijan narrowing was the birth of molecular hydrodynamics. People realize that if I Hello, Ajita. I think uh, Sarah is again disconnected. Hello. Hello everyone. Uh, again, Professor Bhagji is uh, re-logging in. Please bear with us. Hello, Rajiv, you're there. Yes, yes, I'm. I'm oh. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? 
why bangalore is so disturbed now why it it is raining because bakshi was mentioning you no know, so that mm. might be the reason Mistakes have the motivation. It's like music, right? This <laughs> <laughs> is building up, building up, building up. It's ascender. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, starting now again, huh? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, share screen. Uh, okay. Uh, so when we talk of stokes relation and we talk of uh, this is a linear response this is on circuit all, all all the way and that's the way you should think about it uh, so now uh, why i'm talking so much because the, the this linear response uh, might not be valid in some cases uh, so we did not get the connection uh, i mean the previous slide to this slide uh, that part we did not hear Okay, so what I was saying is that oh, this is the molecular hydrodynamics, and this is the new kind of a if you want to talk up um, as Dijan said that uh, two two of the three conservation laws are not relevant. That I said. Now I want to go back a little bit to hydrodynamics, and then again go back to molecular hydrodynamics. So I have gone back to hydrodynamics and talking of Stokes law as such. There is, you see one thing on top, I said Stokes relations. And so I am now again gone back to hydrodynamics and hydrodynamics gives me this relation. I'm just pointing out here that the, it is on Sagar all along and the, this is a linear response relation and friction is a linear response coefficient, which can then be calculated from a time condition function as I'll describe later. See what I'm trying to do now, connect all these things. You know, I'm trying to connect hydrodynamics, kinetic theory of gases, my time condition function, my linear response. And then if I pull it, uh, if, if I pull it, this is the way the friction is calculated. I am not going to do that, but I have a particle. I have, so consider that you have a ball and you are uh, pulling the ball. You know, very interesting. You are pulling the ball, you are giving it force, but you have observed that the ball, when you're pulling through water, it's not accelerating. It is moving at a constant velocity. So Newton's law is not obeyed. Force does not give rise to acceleration. Force gives rise to a constant velocity. And that is on circuit. So this is linear response. And then the, you, you analyze the force field by solving linear response equations and you get six pi eta r or whatever. Uh, but my, uh, my point here is that these are the so I have gone back to hydrodynamics saying that this is one of the major result of hydrodynamics. But there is a way to look into the hydrodynamic equations, the way to look into hydrodynamics as a linear response theory. And okay. Now uh, I now make a transition to, uh, the, I'll take 10 more minutes to uh, molecular thing and I'll come back again to hydrodynamics and I'll probably connect these things a little bit better. Uh, now, so in uh, in the microscopic analysis of time dependent celestial mechanics, we start with phase space. But I wanted to tell you, phase space is what Boltzmann also started, but not phase space what hydrodynamics also started. But hydrodynamics didn't start at a molecular scale, but it has a kind of a energy, um, a number density, momentum, and energy. It has its own phase space. But the phase space in kinetic theory of gas is the real phase space. It has a trajectory. And it, this dynamics in phase space is given by the Leo equation. So what we first go, yeah, if you please want to take that all these things are so connected. Oh, I find students are so reluctant and difficult in thinking about time during step back because these relations are, make it so simple what is not going to the matter. Okay, conservation of density in phase space, that has to be right. Then that gives you a Liouville theorem, which I wrote down second one. Then I use Hamilton's equation, which I'll show in a minute. And that leads me to the Liouville equation, which I also show. So Liouville equation is our mother equation. This is the main equation. 
Uh, Boltzmann did write actually a uh, uh, Liouville equation, but he was integrated in the effort with a single like particle distribution. He knew what he was going to do. That is a difficulty. So he didn't have the full phase space in particle distribution function. Now, so remember, phase space is a space spanned by three atoms, three normal core, three uh, um, uh, momentum coordinates, and three position coordinates, six in space. A point in, a, uh, uh, in the phase space describes the instantaneous state of the system. So the, as the system executes its natural motion, its uh, evolution in, 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 in the phase space, that point moves. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, a, uh, uh, thing. Uh, uh, just one second, give me. I think I'm a little nervous here because I uh, actually I am even I even forgot that uh, that uh, because for a long time these fluctuations are not there, so I forgot how to uh, uh, go to the hotspot and uh, okay, I'll uh, mobile hotspot. So I'll give. Keep that. Uh, okay, I'll keep it ready. Just on. I, I'm not going to turn off now, but if it happens, I'll go to mobile hotspot. Now, okay. So, so all these things are very connected. Kinetic theory of gas, hydrodynamics, uh, the Liouville equation, and essentially very very similar things are happening. Different length scale and time scale, except that in, why you do hydrodynamics? Where we can calculate. Why do binary uh, collision model? We can calculate things as Maxwell did. But when we have n particles, they are interacting things. There is no way to calculate that. That's what we are going to do. Next. How we think of calculations with n particle distribution function. That is the goal. So, so Hamilton's equations is just the same as Newton's equation, but in terms of Hamiltonian. An advantage, of course, that Newton's equation does not have the conservation. So it's far more difficult, well, easy to simulate, but you have more degrees of freedom uh, and uh, conservation of Hamiltonian energy reduces that. That's the constraint that uh, we call up some different names. So these are the Hamilton's equation, which is the same as Newton's equation, if you put it, you will find. Liouville equation is the equation which essentially follows from uh, Liouville theorem and then just put Hamilton's equation there. Uh, and that has been derived already in my Hamilton statement. <coughs> so look at that. D rho dt, then you see dh dpi is kind of a flow term, and d rho dt is a gradient. So gradient is moving with that momentum, and then gradient in uh, momentum is moving with the force. So it's beautiful. This level equation is very easy to understand. You know, it's just force and, and convection, things like that. But at the same time, it becomes a little complicated for us because Hamiltonian has kinetic energy and potential energy. So I have n particle kinetic energy in a classical system, at least I can pick up on them. But in a potential energy, there's the correlation. So Liouville equation is you hardly used. We still simulate with Newton's equation. But when you do formal calculations, formal proof, we all use Liouville equation. Let me now say that. So we need to understand phase space trajectory, I said. Then here is the one uh, uh, phase space type, one dimensional energy system I sent to me by Shuvam today. This is just one dimensional system. So phase space is momentum, is, or is it one dimensional system? Leonard Jones, so two dimensional phase space. Look at that. Look at that, how beautifully it is filling up the uh, phase space. You know, that is ergodic hypothesis for you. Then there's one more three dimensional. Again, one particle you said, how it's filling up the phase space. So that was the basic requirement that my system has to be ergodic. Long, long time people try to prove the system ergodic. That's just to be basically born with great, great people. But in computer simulation, make it so easy. You know, and that's why computer simulation should actually be undergraduate very much. With computer simulation, many things you can teach. Okay. So now, from this, now I want to go to time correlation function for myself. Now, very important comment that one should know that what is partition? This is what you should remember. Partition function gives you response functions like uh, uh, specific heat, uh, uh, thermal uh, compressibility, all the properties. Similarly, time collision function gives you dynamic response function like diffusion, viscosity, thermal conductivity. Just like partition function, 
time position functions are based on phase space. Remember, in partition function, I have to integrate over the phase space. Here, time collision function, I also integrate over the phase space. So, partition function is replaced by time collision function in non equilibrium statistical mechanics. And transport properties and all valuable response functions are offset. Whole of spectroscopy in liquid and uh, biology is from time collision function. So, it is very important that you understand. But please remember the analogy. Okay. Again, examples of the use, usefulness of uh, is the diffusion, the you know, time integral of velocity velocity correlation function, scarcity, time integral. Is, these are exact of uh, stress stress correlation or same stress. And now I want one more thing to note you know, that you write down line of equation or you see, see what is conjugate to velocity. Conjugate to velocity is only displacement and that's diffusion. And as we saw in area Stokes equation, what is conjugate to stress? Conjugate to what comes in prefactor of stress, that's the viscosity. So it is exactly so similarly easy. So the it is all again and again also. So time correlation function of stress stress time correlation function gives you viscosity. No surprise there. That is a response function that measures my rate of dissipation of this. Uh, uh, and, uh, a. Similarly, my uh, absorption spectrum. Is the total moment moment time collision function because that's how in energy come um, external light electric field electromagnetic field and enters okay so and it is in days it's so easy to calculate but in old days we'll also do some calculations i have property a this that energy and it is water so energy is fluctuating and air fluctuation is gaussian i don't have the gaussian distribution this is, you know, the bounty of nature or uh, the good grace of nature that it is Gaussian, good grace of nature that we have central limit theorem, and good grace of nature that you have Dux theorem. So it is exponential hmm. in a, a Markovian Gaussian. And you see the beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. So now uh, time correlation function is defined in two ways. One is the what I've given in top that it is time average that you follow a trajectory. And then you have a time interval. So a, a, a is the, I'm moving along the trajectory and uh, T is the gap between them. So the gap is like this, it is moving gap constant. And I add over that and take T going to infinity. That is the time collision function in, in, in terms of trajectory. And I can also do that in terms of ensembles because many times I can, I need a very long trajectory here, but I can make a hybrid solution where I do phase space that my initial distribution I take 10, 10 initial points. That's the way we usually do. And then we do ensemble average and time average together. People made many mistakes. You know, a recent huge mistake was David Chandler when he went to hybrid model and, and, and said there is no liquid liquid transition and all got garbage result. Uh, okay. So the properties used in the, uh, are the self adjoint property of level equation that I next day, I think uh, my, one and a half hour over, I don't think anybody will have uh, uh, attention beyond that, but the time translation symmetry and time reversal symmetry or parity we have to do. And then uh, some some more, more things are uh, there. Uh, so I, 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 I end here now, I'll take the questions. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so wonderful lecture. So we'd like to have questions uh, from the audience, uh, please. Uh, if you have any question, then please ask directly. Any questions? I think one question is already there in the chat box. Okay, Rajiv. So you take, uh, but please read those. Yeah. So it is asked by G. R. Khan. Uh, they are asking, what is the physical significance of central limit theorem? Physical theorem, central limit theorem is the one that gives you energy is a Gaussian, displacement is a Gaussian, and uh, uh, all the distributions are Gaussian. Central limit theorem tells you that. Now, uh, why is uh, central limit theorem gives it Gaussian? I already stated that, that this is something I want to know a little better. Now, let me try uh, if I can rationalize. So I have one particle, which is, uh, say, the energy. And energy is now sum of many little, little energies. 
So, uh, so these uh, little little energies are changing and they are fluctuating. So total energy, which is some of these uh, small, small energies are also changing, plus and minus, everything is very small. So when I change that, uh, then uh, listen very carefully. When I change that, this change, at least at the case of energy, and also in the case of diffusion, but the energy let us continue that. So these changes of energy, however, does not happen in a in an arbitrary way. What controls this energy fluctuation? What controls the energy fluctuation is something people really don't uh, talk about, but it's exactly what we are talking. A central point of this uh, lecture series is that there is uh, a a, a confining thing, like energy cannot be anything, like there is a conservation law. And uh, if, if other than that, there are springs in the system, which are the response functions, like specific heat. So these springs are harmonic. And so my energy, uh, probability of energy is e to the power Boltzmann equation, e to the power minus beta E. And the, so E is this um, uh, harmonic spring, energy is half omega square E square. So that is the one of the explanation that central limit theorem gives you Gaussian that be, that is a very different and very broad that does not need a physical picture behind it. But we physical chemists want to have a physical picture, then the physical picture in the case of energy goes back to Boltzmann equation that probability of E is e to the power minus beta E. And however, this energy in a macroscopic system is uh, there are springs. I remember I tell the response for equilibrium response function are nothing but the springs holding the system together. That's why the system is stable. That's this, what are the springs? What are the spring constants? Specific heat, uh, isothermal compressibility, uh, resistivity. These are all our dialectic constant. They are all the springs. And their second moment. Why their second moment? Because the distribution is Gaussian. Why they are Gaussian? Because we have this uh, harmonic caging potential, which is holding the system together. So this is one of the uh, reason why all these things are Gaussian. And I think it's a pretty good, pretty good reason. Uh, but I again insist that central limit theorem doesn't care about that. It is far beyond my interpretation in terms of Boltzmann equation. Please take Feller book uh, or Kai Lai Chung. Feller, I recommend much more. Haken doesn't have too much of this. That central limit theorem is, 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 is as I told you, it is the mathematicians are not really given to big names, you know. So they have two very big names. One is central limit theorem, and there is fundamental theorem of algebra. I always wondered why fundamental theorem of algebra. Then one of my colleagues in uh, James Frank Institute, we are working. He said that because yeah, almost everything in mathematics you can use to finding roots. <laughs> and that's fundamental theory. You know? A polynomial and polynomial as in roots. That's a fundamental theorem of mathematics, algebra. They're just beautiful stuff. You have to very passionately, you know, you, you, it is like what uh, uh, they said in Arunnok that, you know, when he used to go out, that area, that forest, Hazariba, which has a little bit in Oku Shongshan. He said that one moonlit night, he went out and he was stunned by the rugged beauty of the landscape. And then Bhuti Bhushan said a great thing in order to appreciate this beauty. He used to walk around in moonlit night. You have to come, you know, you have to engage it. You know, then only, even Bengali Prakriti Shundari Tar, that means only then she will let you see her beauty. It's beautiful. Same in the time dependent step back. This is just beautiful thing. And it really somewhat distressing to me that people don't uh, take it uh, so lightly, particularly for physical chemistry. But I, what I realized by talking a few physicists who came to me after my lectures that they don't understand. They never before understood hydrodynamics and they're happy that I told some Probably the same in physics. Mm -hmm.
Anything else? I think everybody is hungry. I am at least. <laughs> Rajiv. Yeah. So if any one of you are having questions, you can raise hand or unmute yourself. Please go ahead. Also request all of you to probably when the recording is available of these two talks, listen quite a few number of times again and again. Then you will see there are many things which probably did not understand, which you thought initially that you have you have understood. And then again you come back and ask the questions. At this you can write to this forum, and that they they would be addressed to. Yeah, I think this kind of course you can say certain sense a mental course means a or ma. my course grade course um uh, i am bringing out all the beautiful physics right or trying to bring out all the beautiful physics and uh, and some amount of details uh but you do have to do a little bit of work but not much because of computer simulation these days anything but do study do theory do study central theory do study time correlation function and your equation and really big spectra uh see hydrodynamics is very difficult for students to read because they have all these equations all so my equations would be an app because uh, i explain how it comes and how it is linearized you know uh, i can put little bit more in uh, sometime uh, probably we can uh, i think we should do this four five lecture course once more where i would have because i'm making these slides now and i'm making this study night and today so myself so uh, so those i would probably work a little bit more and make it more 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 helpful to students so rajiv you need to say something uh, i think uh, there are no more questions i think ranjit you can conclude the session yeah so thank you very much uh, uh, and thank you professor pakshi for a wonderful lecture we will be having another lecture next lecture we will advertise uh, this platform when it is decided and thank you all for uh, joining us uh, we will meet again on this platform thank you everybody yeah. thank you mr rajesh thank you ranjit yeah see you bye see you